So welcome, Leticia. Thank you so much for joining me to talk about working with the goddesses and self-belief, self-trust, um, working with our, our spiritual connection, and we'll see where else the conversation takes us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really, really honored to be here today and uh, share this conversation with you. So beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. I'd like to start because I know that you have a real aliveness in you with the goddess. Could you tell us a little bit about what does the goddess mean to you and what does it mean to you that... Um, when we say that we we connect with the goddess or we might have the goddess inside us? Yes, so for me, really, um, the goddess is a way to define our divine energy that we have within us. And it's really about finding this energy that can be masculine or feminine to feel empowered and to go through an action. So I really... Thing, it's located on your whole body and it's often something that you feel in your womb as well in your sacred chakra like this kind of force that will you know push you forward in action and inspired action and so on so really for me we are all goddesses all women are goddesses and it's all about discovering what are your own archetype and what are your own you know personality in, that I associate with the goddesses because I find it so gorgeous to call ourselves goddesses. Yeah, yeah. And for me, I think of it like, um, like you mentioned, the, the aspects of the divine feminine. Um, but it's kind of like there's all of these different flavors and manifestations of that divinity. And when we, we connect, we can kind of connect to those um, those energies and those archetypes to awaken the kind of corresponding energy within ourselves. Yes. Yes. It's so true. It's like you, you may reference, you know, a representation of a goddess or something you read about a goddess and you'll be like, Oh, I have this in me. And this is so powerful when this is happening because then you can, you know, embody it and bring it into your own life and acknowledge it it's really for me goddess or astrology or oracle card all those kind of spiritual tools that you have it's all about discovering who you are and about the self-mastery aspect of it mm -hmm. so whatever is the tools that you connect it can be human design can be chinese zodiac you know whatever is your culture and the connections that you have with a, a spiritual tool this is a way for you to know more about yourself and this is where mm. um goddesses for me has been you know a powerful tool but I also use other tools in my practice and for my own life so I guess it's really about being curious and connecting with something that works yeah yeah I'm a big fan of of with with everything finding what resonates with you what works for mm. you because it's really not there's not much that I would say is a one size fits all approach. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And it's what one of my Ayurveda um, teacher uh, told me. It's like today we are in a society where we get access to so much information and so much power and so much um, access to things that were hidden before that it's mm. really powerful. But at the same time, we tend to forget what makes sense for us. We tend to uh, want to replicate what someone else is doing, or we tend yeah. to look outside for the answer when actually all those tools needs to come from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So like you can consume, but what does it make for you to, what, what, what do you create from this consumption? So really like I tend to tell my clients to always start by creating before consuming in their day. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to create to embody this goddess? What are you going to create today to discover more about yourself and so on? And then go and consume the relevant information or content that is aligned with your inner wisdom. Mm -hmm. And um, this is where I find goddess a good way to discover this inner self. Mm, that's interesting. And I heard you um, also mention the the phrase inspired action. And that was interesting to me um, that I, 
I, I think that maybe I hear you saying something about using these goddesses as, as touch points for these energies inside us to help us um, move forward through our days and our lives. And it's, it's interesting because I also think about ways of both being and doing. Yes. And the inspired action sounds to me like more the, the doing aspect, yes. but that's something that um, it's like, ah, oh, interesting to think of approaching the doing with that kind of spiritual inspiration behind it. Exactly. It's exactly that. It's like you start by being and you receive this inspiration or this guidance or this idea. And then from that place, which is your inner self, you take the action. This is why I call it the inspired action. It's like the doing starts from the being mm -hmm. rather than I do, 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 and I have no time to be. Mm -hmm. So it's allowing this space where inspiration can come and then you take the action. So that's why I call it inspired action because mm -hmm. it's not just I'm doing this because I have to or I must. It's really, I, I want to like something, mm. I receive a nudge or something like really powerful is guiding me to do it or mm. is inspiring me to do it. So now I do it with ease and I do it from, you know, a heart center place. So this is why I use this term. Oh, I, as you were saying that, I just felt my belly soften. I felt like my body sigh, like, mm. <sighs> like I felt the ease come into me and I, I get the sense of like a divine momentum and that I, uh, I believe that the word inspiration, actually that the kind of the meaning of that, the, the root of that word is about the spirit entering, mm -hmm. like inspire the spirit, um, coming into you. Is that your understanding as yeah, well? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. It's what exactly is it in that. French? Is there inspiration? A... It's the same word. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> same word. Some words, you know, have the same roots, like Latin roots, and then yeah. they are across um, our culture in France, but also in Anglo, you know, like English speaking country. But yeah, it's, I, I love how you explain it. Yeah. It's, yeah. I'm really curious actually to talk more about this idea of um, you working with that connection and being able to receive the inspiration so that it kind of flows naturally from you with ease, because I think sometimes it can, that's a real sticking point. Like there's not, it can be really hard to find that feeling. Um, and the way that you describe it is also not looking at what other people are doing, not looking at what someone else says I should do. It's coming from, within me but it's also it's not like me all by myself it's like it's it's coming genuinely from inside me but there's support there and yes. that support comes from something bigger than me yes can you tell yes. me a little bit more about that yes so the way I can explain is the way basically I open myself to receive this kind of um you know inspiration or you know um it's kind of push or nudge to do it i and this is what i did before we dropped on this podcast it's really like sitting and connecting with you know nine breath i use a nine cycle of breath so i i just ground myself as if you see a tree you know like rounding myself with roots growing in the earth and really really deep and going into the center of the earth and then connecting myself with you know the universe or a broader force you can call it god you can call it whatever is your belief you know you call uh, this force and and then connecting that from the inside and really like um i i love the kundalini you know aspect of it it's like connecting all of that internally with forces that support you on the ground giving you the groundedness as well as around you and i always welcome you know guidance and inspiration from my higher self so this is the way i tend to do it and i guess this is how sometimes you just say something and you're like where does that come from yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. Because you're connected <laughs> to that yeah and yeah. um interesting this 
this flow or this um, inspiration that's coming from a place that is bigger than just yourself. And uh, it's because you consciously connected to that force and you know you're always supported and, and guided in that. Mm. And um, mm. I guess it's about bringing consciousness mm. in every action that you do and then magic happens. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. I hear you describe that, like you, uh, when you say you have that that question that just kind of you're like, oh, where did or that the yeah the words, and you're like, where did that come from? That happens to me the most often when I am coaching, when I am one on one yes. with someone, and that's when I'm when I'm really I'm so deeply present and I'm in the flow, and I'm kind of I'm present and I'm listening and feeling with my whole body. And, and the next question or the next direction will just arise in me. Or um, I, I've learned by now that if, uh, if the next question is not there or the next direction is not there, it's because I need to just shut up and wait for the other person, wait for the, the client who I'm with because something is still happening for them in their own space. And then something comes up. Whoop. Oh, okay. That's yes. what we were waiting for. Yes. Um, but it, I, it's interesting to hear you describe your, your routine. It sounds almost like a meditation kind of practice that you go into and kind of consciously connect to, um, the earth and what's around you. And I'm curious about when you talk about you're open to receiving guidance, what does that actually look like and feel like to you? Mm. So for me, it's, it's, what does it feel like? It's really, I am, I am open to receive, you know, and often we tend to close ourselves because we are a bit scared to receive, you know, either a feedback or, mm. uh, you know, a question or those kind of thing, because actually every question that you receive in your life, you can see it as a, a guidance for you to go deeper inward and search for the answer inside of you rather mm. than going on google and searching for okay. it so um really for me the way it feels like it's like connecting myself to be able to receive and opening myself to receive this and i always make sure that when i say that i say that i want to receive you know mm. information from my higher self because you can have sometimes some um things that are not really serving you coming up mm -hmm. so really like being with these boundaries as well in place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so this is the way it feels like it's like I am connected and supported by the earth and at the same time I'm open to receive and when I receive I make sure that I set the boundary in place and then it's this kind of as you've described it this question is coming up or this powerful sentence is coming up and you're like where is this coming up and you know <laughs> it's what's happening as you said in coaching session or when I facilitate circle with other yeah. women or when I sit in circle with other women and sometimes mm -hmm. like, okay, why, what is this sentence coming from? And actually mm -hmm. it's medicine for someone else in the circle or it's mm -hmm. medicine for your soul or it's, it's healing someone in some way and it can be your own self. Mm -hmm. So I just uh, feel it's really powerful to not um, close yourself for that uh, mm -hmm. guidance to come, trusting that it's a good thing for you and uh, or for the person that you're helping or for the person that you're sharing with. So, and I guess this is the ego that is coming up. So when I ask myself, where is this coming from? And when you're mm -hmm. like, oh, I, I said that this was a kind of a good thing to say at that <laughs> moment or keeping the silence at that moment was a good thing to do as well. So it's just um, feeling... I guess for me, it's feeling the flow. This is it. It's like the sense of feeling, you know, like when you're floating on the ocean, mm -hmm. it's just that it's just like the sense of mm -hmm. I'm floating and right now I'm just trusting and I know I'm safe because I know how to float and the ocean is not too crazy today. So mm -hmm. I can just let go, surrender and, and, and make sure that I'm, I'm guided into that. Mm -hmm. So for you, that kind of receptive state is like a, a feeling in your body and your energy. Yeah. yeah. Yes. We do actually have a listener question, which fits in perfectly here, um, which is about how, how do you know the difference between 
something that's guidance that comes either from your intuition or, or spiritual guidance and your rational mind or the voice of your ego. So how do you kind of distinguish between those different voices? Mm, I love this question. And I guess everyone like no research about it, I should say, and everyone will answer it differently. But the way it feels for me, it's when it's a spiritual guidance or, you know, kind of something that is coming from my intuition. So I feel it in my body, you know, it's really something that I feel in my body. So it's like, I, I will feel it either in my belly, which we call a gut, li- a gut feeling, sorry, or I will feel it, you know, a kind of sense of openness in my heart, you know, an expansion in my heart, or I'll be like, oh, this is, this is it, you know, it's just, um, but no word of emotion attached to it. So I don't feel, or I don't have the word of fear coming up or sadness or whereas when it's the rational or the ego coming up you're like having anxiety or you know or pure happiness and joy you know you're, you're in your head and you're putting a word or a feeling or something to it whereas when it's the intuition or the guidance it's more filling it in your body and not attaching any word to it you're really mm-hmm. trusting as i've said and surrender and be in this flow and even if it's you know, a news that is not necessarily a good news to deliver, you have no attachment to the news that you're delivering and no attachment to like saying, oh my gosh, this is, you know, a bad news. You mm. just deliver the news and trust that this is what needs to come out at that moment. Or this mm. is actually how I feel it. What about you? How would you answer this question? Yeah, that's interesting. I'm getting this the sense from what you say of like it's it comes through with kind of a a clarity and not a lot of kind of emotional noise around yeah, it. Exactly. I also find that for me it's taken me a while to figure this out but like I I'm not super visual. I mm-hmm. tend to f- either feel things in my body or to kind of I kind of like hear and see words like I see letters and I hear them. Um, But I know that for other people, they are much more visual or they're more oriented towards um, hearing or, or like different, the, the kind of their inner world comes in different forms. Yeah. Their clairs are different. We all Mm. have different clairs. Yeah, it's true. Mm. Mm. But for me, I think I, what you said resonates with me. I think the thing that I would add is that it's the kind of thing that you develop the understanding and the the clarity over time. Mm. It, you need it kind of it's something that comes with practice. Like you start paying Definitely. attention to it and you 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 get a a flash of something and you notice what that feels like and then you experiment with it and see how that works out. And then you get a flash of something else and you go, oh, what does this feel like? And kind of by paying attention to these things and comparing them and noticing what happens and experimenting, like over time you build that trust. The trust is like the accumulation of a lot of smaller events um, kind of lining up, if that makes sense. Totally. And something that I advise one of my clients that wanted to develop this kind of intuition or clairs, you know, the clear knowing or the clairvoyance, whatever, clear hearing, whatever is your clair. And if you want to strengthen it or develop it, you can start, you know, a journal where you put down something that you had this kind of intuition or nudge that, you know, or guidance that this was, you know, something that you feel about this person or something that you want to share with this person, but you didn't do it. And then afterwards, this person is sharing and you knew about it or Mm. you felt it or you Mm. hear about it. So starting a synchronicity, as I call it, a synchronicity journal. Mm -hmm. So you put down something and then by doing that, you're just reassuring yourself because as you said, it's something that you strengthen Mm. and it's something that you first need to trust and building trust when you're too in your rational mind, you tend to want the proof that it's true, you know? Mm -hmm. So writing Mm -hmm. it down and being like, oh, I sense this and actually this is what happened or I felt and I hear this and this is what was said, you know, Mm. all those kind of synchronicity. 
then you start leaning into it with um, more and more ease and accepting, actually, as we said, accepting and receiving this guidance and, and surrendering to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. So um, I'm curious to hear a little bit more about how you work with, like we were talking about, um, rather than copying what someone else does or thinking that the way that someone else does it is the way that you should do it or like getting all of your information from what other people do, what other people think you do, starting to, to focus more on your own internal wisdom, but with that kind of spiritual connection and spiritual support. I'm curious what other ways um, you you connect with that spiritual support or is is that something that is do you work with the goddesses in that way yes i so the the way i work with that kind of internal focus like knowing that it's coming from yourself is first of all i'd say and i'm sure you agree with me on that is i'd say you need to be like replenished Mm -hmm. So my first advice always would be nurture yourself, have some rituals that are for you and for yourself and nourishing for yourself. Like if you read someone sharing their habits or their routine, don't copy it, do a ritual, mm -hmm. which is your own, which is kind of something that really nourishes you and mm -hmm. connect you with your inner self. So it may look like a meditation. It may look like a shower, a dip into the ocean, a run, mm -hmm a book to read, writing, drawing, chanting, dancing, whatever yeah, is your yeah, thing, just yeah. allow yourself to do that. So then first you come from a place of my cup is full so I can give or so I can share. And so I feel comfortable connecting with my inner self because my inner self has something to give. Mm -hmm. So I guess this is what's happening. It's like, I'd say the first thing is starting to replenish yourself and then when you've done that, you can connect with uh, tools that will manifest in the material world, something that is in your subconscious or something that is really deep into your body wisdom or your inner wisdom mm -hmm. or your inner knowing and so on. So for me, it's like first you replenish, then you connect with that. And to connect yeah, with that, yeah. you can use either a record card, which I use uh, myself and with some client, or you can use, you know, um, uh, some goddesses archetype or you can use journaling or you can you, you know you, you can then materialize some things that is from the inside out mm -hmm. into the material world or you can record yourself talking or whatever is the tools that will help you it doesn't necessarily have to be spiritual to connect with your mm -hmm. inner self but this mm -hmm. is how you do it mm -hmm. and this is how I advise um, my clients to do it and how I've been, you know, trained to do it since I'm five, you know, really yeah. stop listening to other, the noise and, you know, trying to be someone else, yeah. be first you and take care of your inner word so that you can guide other in their path. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can hear the birds. There's some, yeah. <laughs> the, the lorikeets are, there's another one. It might be like a king parrot or something that has come into the lorikeet's territory. So there's a territory battle of rainbow birds outside my window right now. It's really cool. <laughs> I love them so much. Actually, and the, the birds sometimes, when my attention gets drawn to them, I feel like um, they can be that little nudge of with a little message for me mm. it's kind of and i think of the the cards oracle cards often is that way too it's kind of like there's some aspect of of synchronicity or the divine maybe that can kind of bring them into your sphere yes but it also is it's kind of like a touch point to uh awaken a little knowing that you have in yourself exactly like when I hear the the kookaburras, they um, when they call, it often sounds like like a they're laughing or like a um, 
a bunch of monkeys sometimes. <laughs> and when it happens, occasionally it'll happen um, in a moment where I'm like maybe wallowing in my own troubles. And I feel like they're, they're going, oh, don't take yourself so seriously. And like reminding me of the cosmic joke. Yeah. And the, um, the cockatoos that have this really loud squawk, like, rah, rah. Um, whenever I hear them, it kind of reminds me to, to use my voice a bit more boldly and not be afraid to be shrill, not be afraid to like offend some people in in um honor of speaking my truth and maybe you know different people probably have different relationships with them but that um that's yeah that's just something that there's there's actually quite a few birds out there at the moment in my out, out my outside my window and maybe they wanted to share that um i have two different questions for you based on what you were just sharing. The first one um, being, I know that you are a mom with two young kids. So do you have any tips? I know that it it can be really hard. Um, Different families have different structures, have different resources, but um, for, for any moms out there who just have a lot on their plate, how to make the time and space to replenish themselves? Mm, The beautiful question. And um, I guess I uh, learned it as I go, you know? So Mm -hmm. I learned it in my own, as you said, structure and with my own need and so on. But for me, it was really a time when my firstborn, so now I have two daughters, they are four and a half and two and a half. And when my firstborn was about 12 weeks old and I just realized that actually I was not taking any time for myself. And you know, it's fine because you have the hormones and you're just like in this kind of happy place and you're breastfeeding, it's your firstborn. It's so beautiful. You can spend hours, like I could spend hours watching her sleeping and not (laughs) sleeping at the time and just be like, oh, she's sleeping. And then when she was awake, oh, I didn't sleep much. I I should go and have a rest, but now she's awake. So I really realized when she was about 12 weeks old that actually I was really exhausted and tired and we have no support here. We live in Australia. And as you can hear with my accent, we're French. And basically I was really like exhausted. And this is when I was like, I need to find some time to fill my cup so that I can be more present for her and I can be more present for my husband, for my friends, for Mm -hmm. my family and so on. And so basically this is when, you know, if you start by looking outside of yourself, you'll have like all those people like wake up at five, go for a run, have a cold shower, da, 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 da. I was like, no, this is not (laughs) the way I've been raised. This is not the way I've done ritual because actually I've done ritual my whole life. Very young already. I was doing tapping every day and so on and so forth. So it's just like, I reconnected actually with that, like what are the things that nourish me? So the tips would be first start by what is the things that gives me the most joy? What is the things that gives me, you know, the most energy? What is the things that if I do it five minutes, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I feel so at ease in my body, in my head. And, you know, I'm just like, I'm just so good. And for me, this is chanting. So, Mm. you know, I chant under my shower. So I have the time every morning to take a shower. So I hope all the men out there listening have the time to take this shower. If they don't have the time to take this shower, it may be, you know, when they're walking, walking, sorry, with the baby in the baby carrier or pushing the pram or dropping their kids at daycare, they can chant, you know. So sometimes I even chant, chant with my daughter when we go to daycare. We are chanting together different song and so on. And so I chant under my shower. I do a chant, which is, you know, aligning my different chakra and opening to receive and so on. And I finish my shower, my shower with a cold water so that I do my breast work at the same time. Because if you take a cold water shower, you need to breathe. Otherwise, you cannot stay underneath. So mm-hmm. I really do like um, a breast work at the same time. So I'm just, you know, doing that. So then I feel really good I chanted very loud under my shower and then I did a bit of breast work and then I'm ready to you know for the morning um you know 
routine with my girls and taking care of them and helping mm -hmm. them to get ready and, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, but from a place of nourishment. Another thing that really nourished me is nature. So I really, I'm very lucky because I live close to the ocean. You may live close to a forest or to a park or something, but really like walking barefoot in nature for me is another way to really connect and nurture myself. And as you've said, you know, watching the bird for you, for me, it's really like watching the leaves and the flowers and, you know, just, you know, the sky or just spending time to connect with this beautiful um nature around me so i'd say it's just bringing into the most mundane act mm -hmm. a sense of nourishment mm -hmm. so it can be also boiling your water so when i boil my water or when i prepare my herbal tea you know i may mix you know some lavender with some rose petal with some you know so i mm -hmm. mix them and as i do that i'm very mindful at presence mm -hmm. so whatever is something that you have to do as a man, just bring some awareness, presence, intentionality, or sacred to it. Mm -hmm. And I assure you, then you'll feel better. It can be drawing, you know, your kids are drawing, yeah. so yeah. draw as well, you know. Yeah. Don't just be there to provide the paintings and the, yeah. the crayon, just draw yeah. as well and have fun. Yeah, yeah. I love that. It's, it's very accessible to just kind of, it's like bringing a different intention and an extra layer of sacredness into yeah. those those normal everyday parts of your day exactly mm. and it's what i tend to tell my clients it's what's called sadhana in mm -hmm. um in sanskrit and it's really about bringing as you've said this sense of intention intentionality and sacred within whatever you're doing in your day to day so i try to be as much present as i can and yeah nourish myself in the moment that I already have in my day mm -hmm. rather than adding more moments. Of course, yeah. then I go on retreats and I do those kind of things to really fill my cup for, you know, kind of a longer time. But in my day today, I always have pockets of time where I can nourish myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it sounds uh, similar to what I would say around pleasure. Like to when you were talking about replenishment and nourishment, um, the language that I use is pleasure, but it's, it's quite a, a similar idea of just finding the, the little everyday yes. things that you can access in each moment, maybe smelling mm. something that smells good. you like, I, I don't walk past a gardenia bush without sticking my nose in a flower <laughs> or a rosemary bush. Or a lavender bush. I'm like, I'm like the person that if I walk past something that smells, I've got to like touch yeah. it and get the smell on my hands or get my face in it. Or um yeah, like the the I love also the ritual of making a pot of herbal tea. I love to kind of open my cupboard and go, like, who wants to come in my pot today? Um, but I it's interesting hearing you describe the way that you have like a a an enriching experience in your shower. Um, I was also on, ooh, maybe it was episode 19, something like that with Afa Fitzgibbons. She was also saying, cause she's got a, a young child that the shower is where she has her place to connect to pleasure. Mm. Yeah. Um, cause she, she's always, always has, has that shower, but that the, just making an, bringing that intention and that richness to that everyday routine yeah. uh, makes it much more nourishing. Yes. Yeah. And especially because the element of water is the element of emotion and mm. you can wash away, you can, you can, you can connect with your emotion, with the inward. It's really for me, this shower, like it's really unlikely that one of my daughter will jump into the shower. Whereas if I'm, you know, uh, in the toilet, having a wee, for sure, the two of them are with me. But the shower, it's like the door is closed. They're going to get all wet. So they don't come in the shower. So for sure, I'm really by myself. Mm -hmm. And it's a way to really have this moment. And, you know, a, a shower, as you said, is so nourishing. It's a, it's, it's a pleasure. And, and I really feel like it's... Um, some things that I will definitely do. And if you don't do it mindfully or intentionally or with a sense of pleasure, then 
in the shower you're in your thought and be like, oh, I need to do this and this and that. Whereas when I'm chanting or when I'm doing my breath work or when I'm, you know, like intentionally like putting soap on my skin with my mm-hmm. hand and so on, then you're connected with the drip of the water. Like mm. you're way more present than mm-hmm. if you're just doing it unintentionally and yeah. without awareness. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just had a moment as you were describing that with the soap and the drip of water, where it just felt like so luscious in my body. <laughs> <laughs> I guess something that I love to say, it's like you can have your own spa in your shower. You know, sometimes <laughs> I put a few drip of essential oil and then I put the hot water on and, you know, you have all this steam water coming with the essence of the essential oil and then you start chanting or whatever is your thing, you know. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I'm in a spa. I'm just <laughs> enjoying myself so much. I don't need to go on a day spa. I just <laughs> can create my own spa in my yeah. morning shower for five minutes, you know? It's yeah, just- yeah. Smell is one of those real big anchors yeah. for me that yeah. I I always have next to me some, I'm, I make sprays with essential oils and little roller yeah. balls and or I put my diffuser on, or I've got some, I've got my own solid incense cones that I've made, or like I've got a um, smoke cleansing sticks with rosemary and mugwort, or like I just, I have all, or I'm smelling my tea. There's always, mm. that's, that's a sense that I always lean into for little moments of presence and pleasure mm. throughout the day. Yeah. I agree with you. I'm the same. I'm the same. I think we tend to be straight away connected to the present moment where we, when we are smelling because it mm-hmm. reconnects us with our breath. And, you know, you take a deep inhale to smell something, you know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. the essential oils that I put mm-hmm. in my hand and I can, yeah. you know, and then I'm like, oh, you know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I love, I love smell as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, and when you, you were sharing before about how to um, connect with this inner wisdom and spiritual guidance and taking that time to replenish yourself first, I think another layer to that too is sometimes what you need is a good cry or yeah. to like do, uh, uh, you know, really connect with what all of your fears are and mm-hmm. and allow space for them or yeah. um to to if you're ha- like if you're if you're having a hard time you can also talk to a friend that you trust and feel comfortable with or um like take care of what what is present in you yeah. that needs to be taken care of if you're yeah. in that kind of fight or flight mode or a more kind of collapse freezy mode to yeah. to support your nervous system to come back Mm. yes and you need to allow the space for that to come out and be acknowledged you know and Mm -hmm. this is when you know sometimes you may cry under your shower or you may because when you pose and when you connect with this emotion then definitely it's coming out Mm -hmm. and um for me i'm definitely someone very connected to my emotion Mm -hmm. and so I think I may cry, laugh, and be scared and scream once a day. You know, it's like <laughs> I go through the rainbow of emotions yes. every single day. So don't <laughs> think that I'm an enlightened being not feeling any emotion. <laughs> I'm definitely feeling all the feels. Yeah. I'm definitely feeling all the feelings. So yeah, I I I it's I really love what you said about making sure that you you feel that as well and mm. without any judgment allowing it to to be there and Mm. uh, be present with it so that Mm. you can you know not binge and move to another another activity being like no no I don't feel anything Mm -hmm. of course you Mm -hmm. do and any feeling are here for you to connect within yourself what triggers it what happened what is the pattern not really about this curiosity that you can have about yourself to then master yourself when it comes to a place of knowing actually and Mm. self-awareness yeah yeah beautiful I'm curious actually at this point because we were talking 
about, we've just been talking about kind of preparing yourself to connect to this, this inner wisdom and spiritual guidance. Would you like to um, ask for a card from your Oracle mm -hmm. deck and see if the, what, what kind of message the cards have to inspire the rest of our conversation? Yeah, definitely. So um, the, the deck that I choose today is called Moonology. And um, I really like, I, I have plenty of Oracle card deck, but I really like this one because it's connecting us with the moon, which is really important as, you know, as its energy is impacting us deeply. But also because I love the drawing in those cards and the way I connect with the cards is really I use my uh, left hand and I, you know, tap the cards and I clear the energy and I intentionally say that I want to clear the energy and I want for, you know, the collective and these conversations that we are having and so on. And then I, I pull the card. So maybe it will drop. Maybe intentionally I will go with my hand and connect with the energy of the card that I will feel uh, connecting with. And this is the way I do it. You don't have to do it this way. I'm just explaining how I do it. Mm -hmm. If you want to do it, uh, if any of your listeners want to do it in their own time, mm -hmm. I think it's very powerful to, you know, educate everyone on the power of Oracle cards. They've been mm -hmm. used for so many years mm -hmm. that I guess um, they have something and you don't need to be a psychic to use them. You mm -hmm. can use them uh, yourself. So I'm just going to do that very quickly and take a few mm -hmm. deep breaths. Yeah, and it's also like that um, little spark that you can see what the card kind of inspires and wakes up inside you as kind of a a little like stimulus, like yeah. Hmm, hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, and the rain is starting, so I hope you can still hear me really well because I can hear the rain. It's really interesting that right now we pull, like as I was breathing to pull the card, the rain started. We mm -hmm. can see symbolism and synchronicity in that, but it's really, really interesting. Mm. So we got the card, which is a mutable moon and nothing is set in stone is a message. Mm. And for the listener who don't have the visual, um, what I see is... Um, this kind of ocean that is really, you know, with big waves and really, you know, going like this. But actually you have the moon up there who is there, present. And despite all the movement and all this mutation, all the things that are happening that may be challenging for you or that you're like, oh my gosh, I'm in a, you know, in a rough ocean moment, you can still be in the eye of the storm and embrace mm. this stillness and the message that I receive about nothing is set in stone it's like it's okay if things changes mm -hmm. and mutable moon it's about you know the mutable sign as well in astrology so I really feel like the connection with this kind of transformation that is happening but you can be aligned and yourself and you're safe because you're there and the transformation will be something that empower you moving forward to go to the next step mm. and um, really something like kind of a mantra for me would be I and it's really aligned with the conversation so it's like I trust that um, that whatever is happening I am safe, mm -hmm. you know, and um, yeah, I really see that, you know, it's like, for me, it's again, the image of if you go under the wave, then the ocean is still. And if you try to pull your head out of it, then you're like, oh my God. <laughs> so just go with it. Mm -hmm. Go into these things that is carrying you. Go into this fear. Go into whatever you're feeling so that you can embrace the stillness and um, nothing is set in stone. So it mm. will unfold for you mm. and trusting. Yeah, really is a trusting aspect mm -hmm. of it. Um, mm -hmm. mm. Mm, beautiful. <sighs> mm. And 
so if we kind of keep carrying this thread of nourishing and replenishing yourself, taking care of what you need, consciously opening up to connect to your inner wisdom, receive spiritual guidance. Um, is there a way that you would tie in the goddesses to this? Yes, definitely. Basically, the way I tie all of that with the goddesses is knowing who is your inner goddess and you are your inner goddess. You know, it's what I tend to, to say. It's like you are your own muse and you are your own goddess. So it's like reconnecting with your own archetype and with the things that really nourish you and the superpowers that you have and the gifts that you have and that are needed, you know, because we tend to think of goddesses as something that is totally external to us. But if we know that it's within us and we can be a goddess ourselves, and either it's your future self, it's, you know, an archetype that you really find an external goddess that you want to make yours and so on. It's really about finding this sense of true self and I love the fact that um, goddesses will help us find that because sometimes we connect with an archetype or we hate an archetype or we're like, no, this is not an archetype for me <laughs> and so on. But this is something telling you something as well. Mm -hmm. You know, even being curious about, you know, oh no, I'm definitely not having this, you know, uh, this archetype in me, you know, for instance, you don't see yourself with a mother archetype, but actually you're probably mothering your friend, you're mothering your project. You don't necessarily mm -hmm. need to be a mother to have the mother archetype mm -hmm. and kind of nourishing soul to create and to, to share and so on. So you could embrace a mother archetype without being a mother of kids because you're still a mother of so many things in your life. So I guess it's really about, and as I do that, you know, I really connect with my heart. You see my hand going on my yeah. heart because it's, it's kind of inner knowing of who you are. And this is why I like the goddess because you can read about their myth, you can look at their representation, you can, and then it's not about, oh, I'm going to be Aphrodite or I'm going to be, you know, Athena or I'm going to be Kali. It's more about, oh, this part of these archetypes, this is something that I have in me. So, <laughs> How could I make more room for it? How could I embrace it more? How could I embody it more? Is it through movement, through reading, through writing, through, through chanting, dancing, you know, really about finding this, you know, in yourself mm -hmm. and, um, and connecting with this kind of inner knowing, as, as we've said before. Mm -hmm. And I know I have, you know, the mother archetype and I had it before being a mother. I've always been, you know, in my leadership role, uh, my boss will always tell me that I am a mother to my team or, mm -hmm. you know, in my, you know, in my friendship, mm -hmm. everyone would be, you know, and sometimes I find it annoying when they're like, oh, you're not my <laughs> mother. And I'm like, yeah, it's true, it's true. I'm not your mother. <laughs> I'm just like, I really want the best for you. I really have this caring energy. And, you know, this is, this is the kind of things that um, then when I became a mother, I, I knew I had this in me, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. I could then trust it and surrender to it and, mm -hmm. uh, and be okay with the mothers that I am, not looking for the perfect mother image outside of me or the perfect representation of a mother goddess, but mm -hmm. just look at this archetype within me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And how, uh, let's talk a little bit about how we connect with different goddesses and also how we understand how to do that with um, integrity and respect. Because I think, like we were, were talking about before we started recording that for those of us from kind of European ancestry, if you go back far enough, there are lineages of, of goddesses and archetypes or, or the, the energies and, and stories, but we've kind of, we've lost that over the fat past few thousand years. Um, 
but there, I think there's something kind of stirring in us that's desiring that kind of connection with that again. Um, so how, how would you talk about connecting with specific goddesses and doing that in a way that has integrity? Mm, beautiful question. And yeah, before we, we talked about this, and I guess the fact of, you know, trusting that you're doing it in a way that is respectful is probably the first step, like making sure that either you are, you know, part of a lineage that makes sense for you to connect with them, but also allowing yourself to connect. Like, even if you're from Australia, you can connect with Nordic goddesses. It's not like you're not allowed to. It's more when you do it, being conscious about the culture and probably connecting with someone who has a background in this culture. So then you make sure that whatever you're doing, you're not being disrespectful or doing this kind of acculturation and taking something out of its own context and make it yours. Mm. But I guess you're allowed to connect. Oh, this is a way I like to think about it. You're allowed to connect with whatever goddess's representation speaks to you because probably in a past life or probably, you know, in another period of your life, you've been, you know, guided towards this goddess in particular or this culture and so on and so forth. So always doing it from a place of, I am, you know, open to that and I'm going to be non-judgmental and I'm going to be respectful of the culture and so on and so forth. And also making sure that um, you've, uh, you're doing it in a way that is um, really mindful, if that makes sense. And that uh, for me, for instance, I connect a lot with uh, with the Hindu goddesses and I'm definitely not from a Hindu background and I'm not a Hindu myself, but basically it's because when I lived in India 16 and 15 years ago, I was like, it was so present and it's such, you know, as we shared earlier, you know, it's such vivid, the worshiping of the goddess and it's such like something that was part of my day to day when I was living there and with my roommates and, you know, I was just like in all those festivals, it was really alive. So it was mm. easier for me to connect with those goddesses and their archetypes and so on. And then I remembered that when I was way younger <laughs> at high school, I studied Greek and Latin and I went on trip to, to Greece and to Italy and we went to visit a different temple. Um, uh, it can be the Athena, the Aphrodite, you know, all those kind of places where we saw the goddess that is are molding to my culture i'm italian and french in the background so definitely like more aligned in my lineage but when i saw um those goddesses they were more part of the past if that makes mm. sense and not really present anymore so i found it harder for me to connect with them but now the more i read about i read back about the myth and about what they represent i really see similarities across culture and it's something that we've discussed a little bit earlier, some things that I go through in my program with uh, the women that join it is the seven step to embody a goddess. And the first step, which is my G of the goddess, I love to create acronym is about being grounding and uh, connecting with your root chakra and all those kind of thing and being connected with these wild women that you have within you. And you could use the archetype of Lilith to do that or Kali. And, you know, basically it's like, which one, or I, like you can use archetype in other culture as well, but for me, based on my, you know, inner connection, it's either Lilith or Kali. And I'm like, so which one do I connect the most with? And then making sure that when you do your research or when you look at the archetype of the wild woman, it makes sense for you to connect with one or the other representation mm. and doing it yeah, in a respectful way and in a way that's, you know, makes sense. And sometimes being curious, you know, when I arrived in India 16 years ago, the first um, guru that I met there told me, oh, you were here, in, you know, in your past life. Because when I landed in India, I felt like, okay, I've already been here, but I've never been here in this life, you know, like, mm. and it was really this sense of um, I'm home, but actually I've never been to this place before. And mm really all my self-discovery in India has been something so magical because I had this sense of, I know what 
I don't know yet, but I will like when people were telling me, I was like, oh yes, yes, oh yes, okay, yes, makes sense, makes sense. Mm -hmm. So yeah, doing it yeah. in a way that makes sense for you. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's it's I I don't think it's something that is going to ever boil down to one short and clear answer. I yeah. think it's important to keep. Like, I don't necessarily have all of the answers for it either, but to consider, um, it's like finding a beautiful balance between the, the kind of lived experience you have in your own body and what you recognize and what feels like home to you, as well as in, in this lifetime, in this society that I live in, what's the impact of, of what mm -hmm. I do? And exactly. always being kind of paying attention and open to um, what that, that impact is. Um, cause it, it, I'm mindful that, um, sometimes the way that we might, if, if we were to, to kind of borrow a goddess from a different tradition, that's not from your own personal lineage. And then sometimes it gets, it gets a bit lost in translation and we can kind of change it and adapt it to suit our own purposes. And um, there's also some power dynamics in there. If, if we are, say as, as a white person, if I take something from a culture that's not mine and then I kind of benefit from that, even though it's not really true to um, its origins and maybe someone who was from that culture, but might be in a marginalized population, they, I might benefit from using that archetype, but they might be kind of judged or, or um, experience some sort of harm from it. So I think, I don't have, uh, I feel like I don't have the most sophisticated, I'm, it's, it's a question that I'm living basically mm. I don't have all the answers but I think important to think about yeah. yeah and I think some things that I tend to say it's when you do something you know from a place of heart and love and really like you know it's what I call you know being respectful and mindful and and really like cannot go wrong it's when you go in your head and be really in the ego and the, okay blah 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 then probably things will come out of it but if mm. you do it with your heart basically you're gonna say you know being super transparent and authentic about it I'm not from this culture and this is why it resonates with me and this is why I'm using it you know like using this kind of language around it and don't pretending to be you know someone that you're not and again mm. it's about if you know who you are then you can be from this place of open heart and you can be and do things that uh, will not harm other and will be taken positively. Whereas mm -hmm. if you do it and you tell another story or, you know, you're not very honest with it, then this is when it backfire and this mm -hmm. is the ego coming in place because mm -hmm. the ego will always tell you, don't be vulnerable. Don't, uh, don't, don't say this, da, da, da. Whereas if you're leaning to this vulnerability, then mm -hmm. you can have a conversation. You know, if someone is harmed, you can have a conversation and you can be really open and putting your heart on the table and be like, okay, I thank you for that. And da, 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 and, and then having this beautiful mm -hmm. uh, conversation. So yeah. yeah. And make a repair if you need to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I, um, I would, oh, I wish we had, I'm like looking at the time and going, oh, there's like 10 more things I wanted to talk about. <laughs> mm. I think there's, there's something that I, I get from you that is a real, like, a kind of traction and taking action towards you know, really believing in yourself and doing what you really want to do and letting that be kind of fed by your spiritual connection and a, a real like, a real kind of forward movement, but with the qualities of 
the ability to be soft and to listen and to connect to intuition. Um, and I think sometimes a lot of what stops us from really taking that action and moving forward and, and doing what we really want to do are our, our fears, our sense of unworthiness, um, not really believing in ourselves or, or trusting in ourselves. Um, and so I'm curious what you, you have to share, what kind of wisdom you have to share around how to bridge that gap. I guess uh, it's a gap which comes from our shadow and the way I've done this work to, you know, step into my own power and accepting who I am for who I am is really doing this shadow work. So, you know, deconstructing the limiting belief or the beliefs that I had, which were not mine, which were coming from my community, from the collective, from my upbringing, from, you know, the, the learning that I had in school, you know, we don't realize how much from zero to seven, we are fully programmed by mm -hmm. our environments. So really like going into this work and into this shadow work and being very curious about what happened? What did people told you, you know, for, for instance, for me, like from my zero to five, people will tell me all the time that I was hyperactive, hypersensitive, hyper, hyper, uber, uber. And then at five year old, I started, you know, seeing someone who was kind of a very, like a, a spiritual guru in a way from my little town. And I started meditating and doing EFT and Qigong and working with energy and so on. So I guess, you know, when I did all this shadow work, I realized how this person taught me compared to the other people in my surroundings that may have been a bit more judgmental about who I was and then making sure that I deconstruct all those beliefs and make sure that now I have my own belief and my own wisdom. So I guess it's not being scared of embracing your own shadow so that you can step in your own power. And I often say that this is the first work to do, even mm -hmm. though people are like, oh no, I don't want to go into <laughs> shadow work. But I guess it's, it's a way, you know, it's, and, and seeing all the things that happen to you as some things that helps you now grow and now be who you are. And by acknowledging them, then you find strength into all those kind of things that you may feel at that moment when it happened, a kind of sense of it's not fair. Why is it happening to me? Da, 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 da. It's going there and taking the learning from it and, you know, doing this work so I guess for me it was really like the, the shadow work that helped me and I tend to say like if you start by embracing your shadows and you can you know find your own light and find your own path mm -hmm. so I would say let's start with embracing the shadow and then if you've already done shadow work and you're like yeah I've already done that but I still don't quite grasp my uh, own power or my own path or knowing who I'm really for who I am really it's um, then experiment different things, mm -hmm. experiment different ways. And don't be scared of failing. If you start mm -hmm. something, just start in the idea of I'm going to learn something out of it. You know, mm -hmm. um, I've created different businesses before this one and they were all failure. And basically all those failure, I can use them now in my own business to help other create thriving businesses because I've failed before. So I've been in different situations where now I can use those learnings for today. And I was, you know, at the time, of course, I was fearful when I, you know, go out there and create this business. And then after a few years, it's not working. And like, okay, mm. okay, let's take time to, you know, integrate, digest, learn the lesson, and then move on. And really allowing time all the time to integrate mm -hmm. these things. So if you... You can't moment, rush it. No, and I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah. It's what we push to I, do, right? Yeah. Fresh, I, fresh, fresh. I really want to emphasize that because like, oh, like 
the reason that we're so afraid of failure is because sometimes it really sucks. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you put all that energy and that vulnerability and for it to not work out the way you want it to, it's kind of, a, it can be excruciating. Mm. But um, we have, like, as, as humans, we have the resilience to handle things that are excruciating. Exactly. And moving on to the next thing without embracing this failure fully and owning it and, you know, doing the work to take, you know, the good and the bad and, you know, the ugly out of it. Then if you rush to the next thing, I guarantee you same pattern will reproduce. Whereas if you do it, then the next time may be a failure, but it will be something else that you're going to learn. It's not going to be exactly the same pattern Mm -hmm. and some pattern we have are coming from, you know, such a deep, deep, deep <laughs> layer within mm-hmm. yourself that of course it takes time for you to bring it up. And if you believe in past life, some, some of the things are even you know, coming from past life. Mm-hmm. I, I love um, everything ab- about psychodrama as well, because often it's about you know, the families that you were in and can come from you know, an auntie that you've seen only once, but actually this one time was just quite critical because it was a time mm-hmm. where you were building something in your in your you know in your brains that then it stick to that place yeah, yeah. so doing this kind of work is so important so yeah i guess mm. it's a journey the mm-hmm. self discovery journey is, is a beautiful journey so yeah and and also i like to think the shadow to me it's it's not just the so called negative things it's just what's hidden or buried mm. yeah and there can be like pleasure that's buried. There can be sure. confidence that's buried. So if you kind of look under the surface, it's not like all demons. Mm. <laughs> so there's some, there's some like gold under there too. And the, uh, I believe that the demons are often trying to protect you in their own way. So yeah. even though they might look... Um, scary or horrible they they in their their own way are trying to keep you safe yeah it helps and to I kind love, of soften that yeah and i love what you just said because often uh, when we start shadow work of course we're gonna look at things that are making you uncomfortable but mm-hmm. you know under some things that is making you uncomfortable there is a piece of gold mm-hmm. and then you're like oh my gosh i forgot about this and how come because it was you know hidden in a place that you didn't want to go but actually if you go there you'll have so many positive things coming out of it so I guess yeah the shadow work is is um is a work to do I wouldn't recommend though to do it by yourself like um I've done shadow work with uh you know either spiritual uh, guru, empath, or, you know, psychodrama practitioner or psychologist, like I would really recommend to be in a safe space to do that work because um, it's a transformative work uh, and you need to, you know, have someone not holding your hand, but guiding you, does that make sense? And Mm -hmm. making you feel safe because you're safe. But sometimes when you do this kind of work, you will feel a bit yeah. unsafe. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, being a coach myself, I always think that it's so valuable to have someone holding the space and guiding mm-hmm. you and helping you. But I would say the like the the kind of measure is like, can you? Uh, and shadow work because shadow work can look like so many different things too. Yeah. Um, if you can be with yourself and stay grounded, even if it's uncomfortable, if you can um, kind of still, still kind of stay connected to the bigger picture, still stay connected to the present moment um, and, and, be with yourself as you do it, then there's plenty that you can do with yourself. But the support of a practitioner is really helpful to see things that might be harder to see on your own or to um, 
help you to stay grounded and present. There's like the, the presence of another human can be really regulating. Like when we're with someone else, it just feel we can kind of stay more connected and in the present moment, I find. Mm -hmm. um, and also when, especially when you're exploring really intense or vulnerable territory, a practitioner can help you kind of measure out how, how much is enough how much is enough mm. for now and to kind of take it at your pace at the right pace yeah. for you yeah definitely i totally agree with what you with what you shared it was beautiful mm. and um i guess i'm always working with someone if that makes sense mm -hmm. i'm never by myself and probably because of the work that i do mm -hmm. you know being a coach as well i feel i need to have a place where space can be held for me as well too. Yeah, yeah. And I know that when you're a psychologist in France, you have to see a psychologist. Mm -hmm. And I feel for me, it's kind of the same when you're a coach, either you need to have a coach or to have someone to support you. And mm -hmm. I'd say, why is it just for those kind of work? Everyone should be supported by someone else. And yeah, it yeah. can be a professional um, or it can be a friend or it can be, you know, I'm yeah. not saying that you necessarily need to invest in someone, but making sure that you have this safe space where you mm. could mm. digest, integrate, mm. and move forward, I guess, is really, really important. Um, yeah, yeah. We all need support. We mm. all need support, especially when we're trying to do hard things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, tell us a little bit about how people can work with you, where people can find you, and then I'll ask you my last question. Hmm. So uh, they can find me either on Instagram, it's essential.shift, which is the name of my uh, company, and they can find me on Facebook as well. I have a Facebook group, which is called Essential Shift Collective, where we go through our uh, all the work around finding more alignment in your life, finding your inner goddess, finding a sense of purpose and, and your own path. And we work also on the business side. So I really uh, do both, you know, kind of the holistic approach to it. And I also have a private coaching program, which is called Empower You, to really uh, be empowered to basically shift into this alignment and intentional uh, life that you dream of. And I'm about to launch, and probably when this podcast will be live, it will be launched, um, a sisterhood program, which is called uh, Goddess Embodiment, to really help a small group of women uh, go through my seven-step method of goddess embodiment and mm -hmm. exploring the different goddess archetype and finding their own archetype so that they can step into their true power. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this is a different way that exists mm -hmm. today. Awesome. And I'll put the your links in the episode description as well. Thank you. So my last question is, if the listeners could take only one thing away from this conversation, what would you want them to take away? Mm, it was such a rich conversation. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I guess the thing that I would say is, start by um, taking care of yourself and replenishing yourself and nourishing yourself and finding a place of joy, a place of pleasure, a place of um, nourishment so that you can step into this um, trust and power and be yourself basically because you know you're ready to do this work or to move ahead from a place of I'm full, my heart is full, I'm nourished, I feel well, I feel secured, mm -hmm. and then you can move on. So really, um, and, and really doing it in a way that I'm not telling you to take a week away or, you know, go on a retreat or go on a day spa, or, but just as I've said, some things that you do daily mm -hmm. that can take only a few minutes in different time of the day, but you nourish yourself. So mm -hmm. yeah, really doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah yes yeah, so important and for me I think the takeaway is this sense of of uh that I can connect to my own inner wisdom and and kind of spiritual support and spiritual guidance and so 
there's a feeling of um, that when I, I stop kind of doing what everyone else thinks I should do or looking what everyone else is doing or trying to follow someone else's formula and I resource it within myself that it's, it's also that I'm not alone. It's not just like little me on an island by myself that I, I can do it with the support of um, spiritual guidance, spiritual wisdom with the, the support and the love of the goddesses. And I loved that, that feeling in my body of making that connection to take inspired action that has its own kind of momentum that comes from it. That feels really promising to me. Beautiful. I love that. Thank you so much for your time and for sharing everything that you're passionate about and for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed this time with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful.